These are the top five skills to learn to become a cybersecurity analyst. So you've probably already heard that the most entry-level role in cybersecurity is a security analyst or an SOC analyst. But what are the exact skills that you should actually be focusing on learning to get onto your resumes and get hired by employers? And by the way, all the skills on this list are perfect not only for SOC analysts and cybersecurity analysts, but also for cloud security analysts. But without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, the number one skill on this list, this one you might have already been able to guess, and that is SOC fundamentals. This includes how to use an SIM, how to set up SIM alerts, alert triaging, incident response, and basically the day-to-day -day task of what you'd be doing as an SOC analyst. So on a daily basis, what your work could look like would be you monitoring, detecting, responding to, and reporting on security incidents. Typically, you'll be reviewing these security incidents and events through either a SOAR or a SIEM, and you may also be reviewing any handoffs from the previous shift since SOC analyst work is basically 24-7 around the clock. So you may also have to review any notes for any high alert ticket items or high prio alerts passed off to you from the previous team as they clock out of their shift and you continue holding the torch throughout your shift. This could also include a quick sync with any other security analyst, or SOC analyst, or incident response managers, or the SOC lead, so that you can align on priorities. Now, after this, the main part of your job is monitoring and alert triaging, which means reviewing any incoming alerts that come from the SIM or the SIEM, categorizing the alerts as false positives or true positives, prioritizing them based on severity and impact, and then escalating them to a higher level SOC team to do further digging if there is something suspicious or a potential security incident. The initial triaging could look like checking IPs, domains, hashes, using tools like VirusTotal and Whois, examining any suspicious user behavior like weird login patterns or excessive logins, and then of course correlating all the alerts across different logs and sources. So there are three things I recommend to learn the SOC fundamentals. Number one is to build your own SOC home lab. You can do this for free using open source tools. I'll link a video that I made on building your own home lab for free. It's very easy and it's perfect for beginners who may not have ever spun up a VM or use the command line. This is perfect for you. I'll link that down in my description. And number two, I'd recommend building your own seam using open source tools. Personally, I would recommend using the Elk stack. This is a great beginner project that is also really good on your resume. I've also talked about this in one of my videos on beginner cybersecurity projects, and I'll also link that down in the description for anyone who may have missed it. But this basically helps you understand exactly what a SIEM or what a security information and event management tool is. And finally, number three, there are a lot of SOC simulations out there that you can do. Basically, it is exactly what it sounds like. It simulates the SOC or security operations center environment, so you can act as if you're actually working within SOC, triaging alerts, digging through logs, writing reports, escalating to a higher level SOC team or the incident response team. There are lots of different platforms that you can do this on, like Let's Defend.io, Try Hack Me. There are also free work simulations where you can be a real SOC analyst. So I'll link all those down in the description as well. And a lot of these are either free platforms or super low cost and have student discounts. So I'd highly recommend checking that out. All right, the second skill on this list is vulnerability management. So this is another critical skill set that you'll need to become a security analyst. And this includes the ongoing process of identifying, evaluating, remediating, and reporting on security vulnerabilities. Most companies will have a vulnerability management tool, which basically scans hardware, software, and cloud depending on the tools available. And the main goal is to reduce the organization's attack surface by making sure that all the open known vulnerabilities that impact your organization are documented and accounted for. There's also some triaging in this in terms of which vulnerabilities get prioritized to be fixed because it is insanely difficult to get down to zero vulnerabilities because there are some things that just may not be fixed or there are no workarounds. Or the worst case, if you have end of life software, which is basically software that can no longer be updated, is no longer supported, but the company might still rely on it for certain core functions. So they keep that technology, but of course it introduces vulnerabilities because it's no longer maintained. So there's a lot that goes into vulnerability management. And the biggest thing is to keep up with CISA alerts. So if you guys didn't know, there was this big thing that happened with the MITRE CVE database about a week or two ago, where MITRE almost lost their funding to manage the CVE database. And this is essentially a giant database with all of the vulnerabilities that are known and documented. And this is where a lot of vulnerability management tools will pull their data from. And that is what they use as a reference to look for vulnerabilities within your organization. Thankfully, we did not lose funding for that, but we almost did. Man, I just can't imagine what a disaster it would have been if we really did lose that, considering how important it is in keeping vulnerabilities and attackers 
dollars at bay. But as part of the vulnerability management lifecycle, your main goal is to identify all of your assets, basically all the things you want to protect, scan for known vulnerabilities. Again, this will probably reference the CVE database in some way. Prioritize which vulnerabilities are the most important to remediate first. And remediating is usually some kind of patching, configuration changes, or making any mitigations to the vulnerability. This is usually done by different teams. So there is typically a separation of duties. So just because you're the cybersecurity team, you may not be directly remediating the vulnerabilities. You may be passing it off to IT or SRE or, or the development or engineering team to actually remediate them, depending on the size of the company that you're working in. So, and then of course the final step is reporting, which is everyone's favorite part, right? Now there are also open source vulnerability scanners out there like OpenVAS, so you can test that out for free in your own home lab. I would highly recommend doing that as another cybersecurity project. This will really look good on your resume, building your home lab, building an SIM, and building out your own open source vulnerability management tool. Personally, I would be really impressed by anyone who is starting out in cybersecurity with those projects. So I'd highly recommend checking out those tools as well. All right, skill number three on this list is cloud security and data security. So this one probably goes without saying, cloud is one of the fastest growing areas in cybersecurity. And I probably include cloud on every one of my cybersecurity skills lists, no matter what the topic is, just because it's such a hot topic and there's a lot of hiring going on in the cloud space. So the main goal of cloud security is to protect data, applications, users, and services hosted in the cloud. This is Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, AWS, all the cloud providers out there. Because nowadays, most companies aren't buying data centers and, and running them on their own. They're most likely going to be growing on the cloud because it's more flexible, it's scalable, and it's overall just a lot cheaper than hosting and maintaining your own data center. But where data security comes in is the fact that a lot of companies, when they are moving to the cloud, one of the biggest concerns is is our data secure? Is our data encrypted at rest? Is our data encrypted in transit? Who has access to this data? Where is our data being used? Where are all the areas the data is being stored? So these are the questions that will come up during various different meetings. And that is why a lot of times data security and cloud security can go hand in hand, but data security is broader as it protects data across infrastructure, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, or through a hybrid environment. Now, on top of actually learning cloud security foundations, something else you should also get familiar with are tools that companies actually use to stay secure in the cloud. And the one that you should really focus on is Veronis. Veronis is the number one data security platform in the world that protects your data, users, and applications. This means that Veronis covers and protects all of your data, which is especially helpful as more companies are deploying Gen AI, adopting the cloud, and all at the same time preventing cybersecurity breaches. They have 24-7, 365 monitoring, using their trusted platform, and their team of threat hunters, forensic analysts, and incident responders. Their team basically triages, investigates, and responds to every alert so you don't have to. And not to mention that Veronis covers all of the big cloud providers in addition to other SaaS and IaaS providers. And it's why I always recommend learning about Veronis and how they protect data across the board to help you not only better understand cloud security and data security in general as a whole, but also to help you understand what it takes to protect data at such a large scale. And Veronis has free training. So this is perfect for anyone who is just starting out. And not to mention that you can earn CPE credits when you complete their courses. And since LLMs and Gen AI have been a hot topic, their cybersecurity webinar on how to protect against top LLM risks for the most common LLM or large language model security vulnerabilities and how you can protect against them with proven strategies from Veronis cloud security experts. So if you've ever had a question on how you or companies can protect themselves, then I highly recommend checking out this webinar. They also have lots of different training through different webinars across cloud security and data security topics. And they also have free training on the Veronis YouTube channel. So all these free resources I will link in my description below so you can also learn more about Veronis and how they keep data secure. Thank you to Veronis for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get back to the rest of these topics. All right, skill number four on this list is regulatory compliance and frameworks, AKA GRC. So you guys know GRC is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, personally because I've done internal audits, I've done external audits, I've gone through SOC 2, ISO 27001. There is a lot that goes into auditing, but throughout all this, I learned that GRC is one of the most important things that you can focus on in cybersecurity, mainly because as I always say, it ties down to the company's bottom line. The main reason for this is if you're a B2B company and you're trying to find customers in different sectors, most of those customers aren't going to inherently trust you with their data, with their users, their customers. They want some kind of tangible proof that you have cybersecurity hygiene, that you'll secure their data properly, that you're compliant against certain cybersecurity standards. And that is where compliance auditing comes in. A company will go through a SOC 2 or an ISO audit and basically have auditors go through their entire cybersecurity program. And once 
that audit is completed and they've passed, then they basically take their, let's say their ISO certification and they give it to their customers as proof saying, hey, I got the certification. This proves that we follow the ISO 27001 standards and your data is safe with us, whether they're a small startup or a big tech company. And a lot of the times customers won't work with you if you don't have your ISO or your HIPAA or your PCI. There are a lot of different standards and frameworks out there depending on the sector that you're in. And one of my bold predictions of 2025 and up to 2030 is that GRC is really going to start booming, especially in this era where AI has made technology, has made education and access to resources so much more accessible to the average person where someone non-technical can go and build their website using AI tools without even learning how to code. I mean, this was very different when I was learning how to code 10 years ago, which, damn, that sounds like a really long time. Yeah, I, I didn't have all these fancy AI tools that people have now. What used to take weeks to code could just take a few minutes. Granted, obviously there are mistakes and you still need humans to correct them, but for the most part, AI has made tech very accessible. And with that accessibility also just makes it cheaper to build things. I predict that a lot of startups, companies, and, and different orgs are gonna get spun up to grow in this age of AI. And all of them are going to need ISO audits. All of them are going to need to go through compliance. They have to follow certain security standards. They need GRC. And even if you're not going to be a GRC analyst, it's helpful to at least know what ISO 27001 is the difference between a SOC 2 type 1 versus a SOC 2 type 2. All these things are just helpful to know. If you're going to cybersecurity, you're going to go through an audit, internal or external, at some point in your career. So you might as well learn about it now. And it'll be really impressive to someone who is interviewing you if you are able to speak on that experience in the chance that you are asked a question about it. I'll also share some free training for GRC analysts, specifically for the NIST framework in my description as well. All right, last but not least on this list is Identity and Access Management, or IAM. This includes things like making sure that users only have the least privileged they need to do their jobs, role-based access and federation, especially since security breaches in the real world can often stem from IAM misconfigurations. It basically controls who can access what and under what conditions. So role-based access control or RBAC, it's basically access granted to the user based on whatever role they are, whether they're a developer, a salesperson, an HR. So you basically group permissions depending on the type of role. So you don't have to have a different set of permissions for every single person. Now, of course, we need to have different access across different accounts and different providers, which is why users will typically log in with a identity provider like Google or Okta. So you don't have to log in multiple times for the different platforms that you use on a day-to-day -day basis while you're working. But the biggest rules to follow are to always make sure that accounts don't have more permission than they need. Multi-factor authentication is always turned on. There aren't any access keys or tokens that are exposed and hopefully especially not on the public internet. And that also includes securing and locking down any public cloud resources like S3 buckets. But in terms of a technical scale, I would say that an SME who is focusing on IAM is a bit more technical than GRC, just because you may be dealing with different protocols like SAML and OAuth, which means you could be digging deeper if someone, let's say, does have access issues or they can't access a certain resource that they are actually supposed to be able to access. But access control and identity and access management in general is one of the core foundations of cybersecurity. So it'll always be a skill that is in demand if this is an area that interests you. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you guys so much, especially if you watch all the way until the end. I've just did a lot of different resources and free trainings in my description. So be sure to check out those resources and continue your learning journey. You can also learn more about Veronis and how they keep data secure through the link in my description. Don't forget to also check out Veronis free training and their webinar on how to protect for the most common large language model vulnerabilities. If there are any other video topics you would like to see from me in the future, feel free to drop them in the comments below as well. Don't forget to stay connected on Discord, LinkedIn, Instagram, all also linked in my description. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.